Hello everyone, welcome back. As you saw from the title, today we're doing something a little bit different. I turn 30 at the beginning of September, so in just a few weeks. And before that happens, I decided that I wanted to look back over the last decade. I think everyone can agree that your 20s are an incredibly formative decade in your life. And I wanna look back. And I don't know why I feel a little bit nervous for this video. I just feel like a little bit apprehensive. So I'm gonna split my reflections into two chunks. So we're gonna have two different videos, one reflecting on 20 to 25, and then one reflecting on 25 to 30. And this one I definitely feel with a more apprehensive to just look back on 20 to 25 I just think it's such a well I don't even know the right words like is it chaotic or is it it's just a very for me anyway I think my 20 to 25 years were like the rough parts of my self-discovery but anyway I'm I feel I'm nervous but I'm also really excited so the things we're gonna do I have ordered a load of pictures from that time in my life because I also didn't YouTube back then so I also want to share my life from then with you so I've ordered a load of pictures to be printed which I'm gonna go and collect now and then I'm going to revisit all of my favorite foods at that time. We're going to watch some of my favorite shows from that time, reflect on all the music I loved during that time and just do like a bit of a deep dive reflection. And then hopefully out the back of all of that, I'm going to be able to share the 10 key things that I learned from 20 to 25. Anyway, enough babbling. Let's go get like the pictures. I think they're the thing that I'm like most excited slash apprehensive to look through because they're just filled with so, so many memories. I collected them all a while ago now, so... I don't even really remember what's in all of the pictures. Anyway, we're going to go, we're going to get them, we're going to have a look, we're going to do a bit of a shop and then we'll get home and we can start going through everything together. know that like Gilly Hicks or Jilly Hicks, I don't know how you say it, is still a thing. I thought that shut down ages ago. Anyway, I was also <laughs> walking past Hollister and it was blaring Taylor Swift music and I just thought, well, nothing screams younger Ellen. Probably more like teenage Ellen, to be fair. I definitely had a phase of Hollister again in my early 20s. And if Taylor Swift and Hollister didn't just scream me getting in the zone for this video, then honestly, I don't know what else would. So I'm feeling so good. We now need to hit up a supermarket. All the supermarkets here are like nice supermarkets. I need the less nice supermarkets. I need the supermarkets that stock the kind of terrible food that I ate when I was at uni. So we're gonna go and get some food. And I'm actually genuinely hungry. So let's go get some of my favorite foods that I used to eat way back where. pasta tripod again so it's not quite tall enough but we successfully had a Hollister trip as you saw and then <laughs> nothing screams personal growth like reflecting on this food shop that I've done so I gave myself 30 seconds to write down just immediately what came to my mind as like the main foods that I ate between ages of like 20 to 25. I probably was slightly skewing it to the main foods that I ate while I was at university, although I do see like my uni years is like very dominating during that 20 to 25 period. Anyway, this is what I got. Frozen potato waffles. I used to eat these so religiously. I'd come back from a night out, I'd put mayo on them and I would eat 
mayonnaise covered potato waffles as like my drunk food when I got in from a night out. I always ate when I got in from a night out anyway. So today we will be eating frozen potato waffles with mayo. I promise to feed my food, and this is really, I'm telling myself this, not you, but I promise myself that I will give myself so much nutrition and goodness tomorrow because today I'm not feeding myself anything good. The next thing I ate, honestly, so often was these. These are chicken flavored super noodles. And I honestly thought I wasn't gonna be able to get these and I thought I was just gonna see if they had like a veggie flavor because I used to like full on eat meat in my early 20s. And no, these are so full of just like total rubbish. There's not any meat in this. It actually has a little label on here that says suitable for vegetarians. And I've read through all the ingredients and there's no meat in it whatsoever. Gross. Anyway. But I did genuinely like love these and I used to put like cheddar cheese on top. And then when we sit down and like watch some of my favorite shows that I used to watch in my early twenties, later on today, I got the snacks that I used to just devour. One, Magic Stars, I have to be honest. I also still love these now. Who doesn't love Magic Stars? But the way I was feral for these back then, oh my gosh, I'd go through one of these like share bags or like there was no tomorrow. So I've got some of those. Same thing with like strawberry laces. I love like a fizzy sweet. And the way these are like really like zingy fizzy and they can be from any old shop, just like the supermarket own brand fizzy strawberry laces. I'm actually very excited for these. And then I had the same thing with these are like the non fizzy ones. Oh, they didn't actually call those ones. Those, they call those, oh, these ones are called lances. I didn't even know that. I've been calling them laces my whole life. And these ones are the laces, like the really thin ones that are not fizzy, but just like chewy sweets. Anyway, so that is the shop that I did, really nourishing my body with goodness today. Anyway, so I'm gonna eat these a little bit and then we're gonna sit down and go through all the pictures that I got and just reflect on those first five years of this last decade. Okay, so slight change of plans. Instead of eating all the junk food, watching TV, reminiscing, looking at pics, all the fun stuff, instead of doing that today, we're now gonna do that tomorrow because Cameron's brother is actually visiting from South Africa, which is so fun. He's only been here for about 48 hours so far and the weather has been absolutely horrendous since he arrived. He got here and he was like, guys, it's winter in South Africa right now and the weather is better in the winter in SA than it is in England in the full summertime when I've arrived in August, but the sun has come out. So it's just the rules that we take him to the pub. So we're gonna take him to a nice pub garden, show him how nice England in the summertime can be when you've got like a nice cold beer in the sunshine outside in a pub garden. There's just, there's just, there's nothing quite like it, okay? So we're gonna do that now and then I'm gonna pick up with you guys tomorrow. But before we go, I have to show you the stuff that I got from Hollister because I honestly love it so much. I only got two things. First things first, I was about to put it straight on. I got this jumper. It's like a, kind of like a dusky rose stripe. It's not pink, but it's kind of like that. Yeah, but I tried it on in the shop and it's so comfy. And Hollister is such a good shout. I honestly haven't shopped at Hollister probably since I was in my early 20s, which is such a miss because I love Abercrombie so much. And Hollister is just Abercrombie's like cheaper cousin, really. So here is the first jumper that I got. What do you think? I honestly think it's so nice. It's like big oversized fit. I think I did actually get it in a, no, actually I think this is a medium and I like get a medium quite a lot. So this one does actually already have like an oversized fit. I'd say like size wise, I'm kind of a 10 to 12. Sometimes I'm an eight, but more often than not, I'm like a 10 or a 12 UK sizing. And this is a medium. Anyway, I'll link this, but I just thought this was so nice. And because it's not like a super pastel pink, I thought it'd also be quite nice for like autumn. And I just think I love the big stripe. It adds a little bit of something, something. Like I'm not amazing at wearing lots of pattern but a big bold stripe I thought was so cute. Okay, this is the first one I got. Obviously I'll link it. And the second one is then this ridiculously beautiful sage. It's, again, it's another stripe, but it's like a thin stripe. Don't you just think the sage color is so pretty? This one I got in a large, which I don't know if I will regret this because it just makes it slightly less like shapely, but I tried on the medium and I just thought on the off chance that it shrinks a bit. This is the wrong t-shirt because the t-shirt I'm wearing is very long line. I will also link this t-shirt. It's the best white t-shirt in the world. 
but you have to, anyway, I'll show you the t-shirt in a second, don't get distracted on. Okay, so this is then the second jumper. Oh, let's make sure my white t-shirt's level. This one's got more of like a, it's more cropped. And it's a slightly different shape, but this one's less oversized. Well, this one definitely isn't oversized as a normal jumper. It was quite fitted. So this is a large. But again, don't you just think the sage, like it's so perfect for spring and so perfect for autumn, which is right around the corner. It's cozy, I love it. Okay, so those, that's literally all I got, these two jumpers. But I just thought they're so nice. And then while I'm at it, because I can't think of anyone who doesn't need a good white t-shirt recommendation in their lives. I just think it's something we all need. This is a public service announcement. This is the best white t-shirt out there. Mm, I have two favorites. This one, which is like got a nice, it's kind of like fitted and I think it's fitted really nicely. I don't know how, if that like comes across on camera, but I think it fits my shoulders really nicely. And like the sleeve is like, it's a cute sleeve. This is the first one from Uniqlo. I'll link it. And then my second favorite white t-shirt is from Cos, which I've definitely linked before, but I'll link it again. And that's kind of like more of a croppy boxy t-shirt, which sits so nicely with jeans. Like it probably finishes more like here, the Cos one. Both, if you buy these two t-shirts, I basically just have hundreds of those two t-shirts. And they're the only white t-shirts I buy. And I probably can't show you that well on screen, but like the, the thickness, of the cotton and they're so comfortable anyway. I don't need to go on about a t-shirt. I'll link the t-shirts, I'll link the jumpers. I am now gonna go and see where the boys are at because it's probably time to head to the pub. I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. We are starting off the day strong and on theme because we have our potato waffle. Cameron's making eggs. He's the king of eggs. And here is the potato waffle in all her glory. The truth is I do have to have a little bit of mayo with this to complete the, what's the word? Um, the throwback, yeah, to complete the throwback, we need to have some mayo. And obviously we've got the Olympics on. Here we go. This is probably the least nutritionally dense breakfast that I've had in a while. Eggs, cheese, mayo, and a potato waffle. But this is, to be fair, what I would have over and over and over again at uni, so. It's a fair representation and we can't deny, it's also probably gonna be very delicious, but it's not much to look at. Anyway, here goes nothing. So for those of you that don't know, I started my 20s at university. I studied at the University of Bath and I actually did biology. So I'm technically like a scientist by education, which weirdly like just doesn't feel very me now at all, but I actually always really wanted to be a vet. And that was like the number one goal, like throughout pretty much all of my teenage years. And I took that goal extremely seriously. I did loads of work experience. I did oh, hours and hours and hours of waking up at 3 a.m. to drive to farms. I did lambing seasons. I worked on dairy farms. I worked with buffalo. Honestly, I did so many different things. And then right at the last minute, I had this feeling of really wanting to have the opportunity to do something else in my life at some point if I wanted to. And I started to feel a little bit as though being a vet was like a one track thing. And I started to question everything. And I don't know, I guess in so many ways, it's still so crazy to me that at 18 or 17 even, you have to choose what it is that you want to do with the rest of your life. So I ended up just going, right, I'm just going to stick with biology. And in the UK anyway, like you don't, your degree doesn't dictate exactly what job you get. So it's been so interesting since talking to Cameron, he's like in South Africa, if you studied biology, you couldn't then just go and like work for a business. You'd have to 
prove that you studied something business related at university to do that. Whereas in the UK, if you study biology, a big business would definitely accept you because you've kind of got the transferable skills anyway. So I decided to do biology and that is what I did. And I feel like so many of the memories that I've got here are being a student. Like that was the big chunk of my early twenties and studying at Bath, making friends, partying a lot. I feel like a lot of these pictures are party associated. My early twenties was also my longest stint of being single. I have always been more of a relationship girl, to be honest. I think I've always kind of thrived in the comfort zone of being in a relationship. And I had a long-term relationship in my teen years at school, and then we broke up before it was time to go to university. And then I kind of had my early single years at uni. So there was a lot of partying. Anyway, let's show you a few of these pictures. I literally don't even know where to start. I suppose really what came first like was my party era. I met one of my very best friends, Kalantha, right at the beginning of studying, which I'm so, so pleased that I did. In fact, it wasn't right at the beginning. It took me a few months to meet her. She was on my course doing biology, but I was really close to actually dropping out. At the beginning of university, I really didn't vibe with it. I know so many people like Freshers' Week and those first few months are just like the most incredible time of their lives. And I'm so jealous of those people, but for me, I found it really hard. I was put into halls, and like, which is kind of our accommodation. I was put into halls with people that I just really, really didn't click with. We had very different like religious and cultural backgrounds. And so they didn't drink at all and they didn't want me to drink. And some of it was just really hard because I felt like I was then isolating myself and I wasn't getting to do a lot of the things that I had wanted to do, like being able to go out and celebrate with all my new friends. And I definitely felt slightly excluded from them as a group. So I actually found it really, really difficult at the beginning of university until I met Kalantha. And then we honestly just had so much fun. We used to love dressing up so much. Look at this picture. <laughs> so every Wednesday night was like the sports night out and there was always a different theme for the night every single Wednesday where all the sports teams would go. Bath was a very, very sporty university and like I have always been in a sports team but I'm just not that competitive, honestly. So I never like really got the bug but like all my friends were always very sporty and I kind of joined teams just to have the social component of it and I guess because I'd always been in sports teams, I was always okay but I was never amazing and I was never gonna be in the first team because I just didn't have the commitment level for it or probably the natural skill either. So when I first joined Bath, I was in the lacrosse team. I played lacrosse and netball at school. So I did lacrosse for a little bit at uni, but honestly it didn't last long. My commitment level to sport was just not good enough. I was like, I'm just gonna let this team down. But because all of my friends were all very sporty, I still went to the Wednesday sports night out for the entire four years that I was at Bath, regardless. And yeah, every week there's always a fancy dress theme and this, <laughs> this is a picture. I'm not kidding. When I, I painted my, my entire body blue because one week, Calantha and I went as Lilo and Stitch and she wanted to be Lilo. <laughs> and so I went as Stitch like, yes, that is me. That is me dressed in blue. And that is us in our halls before we went out that night <laughs> as Lilo and Stitch. Oh my gosh. I still can't believe I did that. Like, look at that commitment and I even stuck the things on my head to try to be like Stitch. And then this was us at Halloween one year. Uh, I did Calantha's face makeup as well, which she loved it because I always loved doing like face makeup and being really creative with all that stuff. And she like was fully not. So it was always so fun because I used to be able to do two things for every night out. And this was Halloween one year. I wish you could see how good the bite was. I was a zombie and she was kind of like a cracked doll. Uh, this was Kalantha as like the cracked doll. Look at her face. Isn't it quite good? I'm not, it's not like I'm amazing or anything, but I was happy with that. And then I don't know if you can see the bite on my neck. Or oh, I don't know if you can see the bite on my neck, but honestly it looks, I mean, I did, I'm proud of that one. That was probably the best thing I ever did because I got like, um, like prosthetic skin. So it really looked like someone had like taken a chunk out of it and it looked so infected. And then like I had the infection like all spreading up my face. It was gross. Like that one was actually disgusting, but it looked so good. And then because I've always lived in London, we actually ended up having like a lot of times where Calantha would come down to London with me and we'd end up going like clubbing in London and we'd find it so fun to go to like really fancy clubs where you can't afford anything and you drink at the pub around the corner and then you go into a fancy club in your heels and you buy like one drink each because that's all you can afford. 
and just like dance the night away and have the best time and I used to absolutely love 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 doing that and now that sounds absolutely exhausting but I'm so pleased I did it when I had the chance. I also loved when at that time being able to go and visit other friends so you guys have seen in some of my other videos like my friend Sashila and I used to go and visit her at Cardiff which was always so much fun she went to Cardiff uni and it was always so good when we oh yeah this is another picture of me in one of those stupid cups <laughs> Honestly, I'm so glad I did all this in my early 20s because it, I don't even know what it would take me to get to a club now, but it was so fun. I think another really big component of my early 20s was like finding my comfort zones and like sticking close to the family that I've always had. So for example, my friend Hayley is actually not a family member, but she's as close as a family member as anybody could ever get. We grew up together and we were basically raised together, like her and her sisters and then me and my brother and my sister were kind of all raised as like a six. And if you saw the London Diaries vlog, I was away with her parents and my parents for that. So she wasn't there, but I was there with her parents. So we've always kind of like just been one big group. And I think during your early twenties when there's like a lot of insecurity and a lot of chaos of not really knowing who you are yet or who your real friends are, or if the guy that you like actually likes you back, it's just an emotionally tumultuous time and being able to have those like core people in your life that know you from before you moved away from home I think was so critical so I spent a lot of time also visiting Hayley and seeing her and her and I have always loved Disney together and so we went to Disney one year which was so much fun I think this was literally when we were 20 and we had literally the best time in the same vein like I spent a lot of time with family and the most exciting thing that happened for sure in my early 20s I have, think I have to give full credit obviously I went to university I studied I had an excellent time but the greatest joy in my life without a doubt was the arrival of this little man my favorite little man in the whole wide world we got Bali in my early 20s look at him honestly it's not the best picture of me but he is the cutest bundle of joy in the entire world here's another one of me and him on the sofa actually now that I'm thinking about it we got him right at the end of my university so I only had to I didn't actually have to come back too often to see him I probably came back to see my parents more than anything but look at this little guy look at his little face yeah actually I'm getting my timelines muddled we didn't get Bali until the end, but he's just, he's the cutest. I also finished my, oh, here's a couple of pictures. I should probably show you that I did do some studying while I was at uni. This is me out, I can't even remember what we were doing on this one. I think we had to, was it snails? Honestly, studying biology is a lot of like bugs and creatures that you would not find that exciting. I think it was some kind of like general mollusks. Like we had to collect, I think it was like limpets and other shelled creatures from the rock pools and we were definitely doing some kind of we did a lot of field trips actually we were studying evolution we were measuring the different sizes of the shells and anyway this is like me and a group of my course mates at the beach we went to wales and we actually had a blast and i'm so glad i've got these pictures to prove i did do some studying at that point and then i actually finished my uni time this is me graduating at the end sat on the end of a big university of bath sign I actually finished it with the most fun thing and I'm so, so, so pleased that me and my sister did this. But I decided to celebrate graduating from university with a trip with just me and my sister. And me and my sister went to Bali together and we hiked up the mountain, that's right at the very top. And I'm just so pleased that I spent time, I spent that time like investing in my relationship with my sister. We're actually only like 18 months apart, I think, which I have no idea how my mum managed that, but we're only 18 months apart. And I just think all relationships, you get out what you put in. And the fact that we like prioritize spending lots of time together, I just think it makes for the best relationship ever. <laughs> it's a picture of me, my sister and Bali all on the bed together. This is actually my childhood bedroom at home of us all like tucked up in bed. Gosh, my room was an absolute state. But doing things like that was were the things that really filled my cup. And then after that, I joined the workforce. I joined the corporate London workforce. And this is actually, I don't know if you may be able to spot me in there. But this is a picture of me starting work with the rest of the cohort. I actually started, my first year at work was, I worked for a company that's owned by GSK. So I started in pharma because I kind of like most linked to my degree because I knew that I did actually want to go into business and I didn't want to be a scientist like in a lab. So 
I thought, okay, biology, pharmaceuticals, like there's a science link there, that'll be a good in for me into business. So I actually started my first year at GSK, it was in the GSK building and it was incredible. I loved working there so much. I just did that for a year. It was like a one year situation. And then I moved on to a different graduate scheme, which was in Canary Wharf on the other side of London. GSK is like right on the west and then Canary Wharf's right on the east. But I wanted to be kind of like right in amongst it a little bit more than where the GSK offices were. But I love starting work, I have to be honest. I think it's a really like daunting and terrifying time. I just think it's just one of those things that when you first start work and you have your first experiences of a boss that gets you down or colleagues that you feel like are out to get you a little bit or it's super competitive, it can be a really big shock to the system having that level of routine and that level of structure that you basically haven't had for the last four years. I don't know if this is just like a common thread for everybody or if other people spend their time more productively, but if I could go back and tell my 21, 22 year old self anything, it would be do something productive with your university time. Like there is so much just time, like do something productive with it, do something, anything, even if it's not like career ambitious focus, but just like something productive. Stop watching TV, get off the sofa, do something good. But then maybe that's how you're supposed to spend it. Maybe you're just supposed to go moment to moment and go with the flow and just like have a great time. Yeah, it's so interesting to reminisce on such a crazy period. And I'm so pleased I printed out all of these pictures. This is me graduating on graduation day. Again, it's such a good picture. Oh, this was so fun to go through these pictures. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go make that terrible food and see if it's any good. I'm gonna sit down and watch some TV and then I'm gonna talk you through the 10 things that I learned. Okay, here we go. All in the name of nostalgia. To be honest, I'm talking quite a lot of rubbish about this. I, yesterday I really was not in the mood to eat this whatsoever. Today I'm actually genuinely excited. I loved it. Like, I cannot tell you, when you were hungover, or actually drunk. There was nothing quite like these noodles. I, uh, I, I don't feel good about putting these in my body because really there is just nothing of value in this whatsoever. I don't even want to look. Oh, I just think that if there's a load of words you can't pronounce in the ingredients list, it shouldn't be going in your body. But also, you know what? Life's too short and every now and again, or well, really this is like the last time ever in my life. I'm gonna do it, so. <laughs> They're exactly the same. My ramen noodles, my packet of flavoring. Right, let's get this on. Okay, let's do this. I'm sure there are like actual instructions on how you make this, the fact that I can't even remember. Oh yeah, I used to make these in the microwave, I remember now. We didn't even have a microwave in this house. And I definitely put too much water in. Okay, let's pour some out. Because I remember I didn't make it as like the full on soup that I think it's like intended to be. I made it as like, almost like pasta with a sauce kind of a vibe, as opposed to like a full noodle situation. <laughs> let's see how this goes. Stop, it actually smells good. I thought I was gonna have to force myself to eat this. It actually smells really good. <laughs> As if. Honestly, I actually would never normally eat in bed because I'm currently now in my bedroom, but the boys are downstairs and it didn't feel right to like kick them off of their afternoon. They've been very busy today so far. And so it's only right that they like got the main TV and could chill on the sofa and stuff. And I was like, actually, you know what? Eating in bed is something that I wholeheartedly am against now, but at uni, that was the only place to eat. Climb back into bed and eat. And that was what I did. So here we go. We're gonna eat in bed, watch Charmed, chill out. <gasps> what a throwback. Okay, here we go. You can be with me for the first bite. Does it actually taste the same or as good? I actually really like it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that gives me so many memories. You know when it's like the morning after a night out and you're with your girlfriends in the kitchen of your student halls and one of you kissed a boy that you definitely shouldn't, the other one threw up because they had had too much to drink and the other one went home really early because their boyfriends at another university and they wanted to call, go home and like call them and make gooey, gushy, lovey noises down the phone at them. 
and you're all just like reminiscing on the night and chatting and shoving your face full of noodles or you do all of those things but it's just after you've got in from a night out oh my gosh this literally just tastes like all of those memories like all bundled in to one bowl <laughs> so fun right I'm gonna put on some Charmed, I'm gonna chill out. I'm just about to start season four, which is when there's quite a big cast change. And I remember really enjoying this bit. There's like a new witch on the scene and she's a vibe and it's really fun. If you know, you know. Right, let's start season four. Enjoy our noodles. And I hope you're having as equally a chilled day so far today, because this is lovely. What do you mean go? Go where? Paige! Hey Paige! that episode is and how good charmed is man i mean i have been watching it recently so i do remember but that episode oh, i haven't seen it in years right it's time for sweets and it's time to impart some wisdom i've opened these ones already i love a fizzy sweet so much i just don't feel like i've had these in literally years i did check that these are vegan because even though i did eat meat in my early 20s i'm not willing to break that for now so mm. Oh my gosh, they're so good. There's just something about like a fizzy tangy sweet. Okay. Those I would rate like a solid 10 out of 10. Would happily buy those and eat those now. 100%. Okay, now let's try these strawberry laces. Oh my gosh, they're so tangled. How do you even get one out? <gasps> they're so long. What the hell? Oh, okay. These ones smell more of like just strawberry. Mm, okay. It's coming back to me. These ones are more like, there's like fruit roll-ups that I had as a, like an actual little kid. Like when I was small, we'd have those fruit roll-ups like in our lunch boxes. This is, I'm happy to leave this in the past with the soup noodles to be honest. These are more like um, five out of 10. Like they're not bad, I don't not like them. They're kind of like nothing. They didn't really add anything to my life, which is basically, how I felt about the noodles. Like, as soon as the initial nostalgia wore off, I was like, there's no need to eat these. Like, genuinely they were nice, like they weren't disgusting, but there's no there's no need to consume those. That's kind of how I feel about those. And then I don't even need to question myself or rate these ones because I already know that I still love Magic Stars now. But let's give them a go anyway. Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, so good. Magic Stars have no business being this good. I don't know why they're so good. When the quality of the chocolate it's clearly bad like there is nothing good quality about this chocolate but somehow they're so delicious i think it's because they're so like light and airy and i was just about to say i completely forgot that they all have little faces oh my gosh it's so hot in here today that it's all melting right let I me mean, eat that one that started to melt and i'll show you the other ones but like look for example this little guy excuse my very chocolatey fingers i don't know how to show you they're melting so quickly this little guy has like a little shocked face and then if i get a different one this one's got like a little Kind of angular face oh this one's got like a kind of like a swirly whirly a swirly whirly kind of nose it's also amazing how much my sweet tooth has like gone down oh, water like a few magic stars and a few sweets and i'm like i'm done that's it that's enough where it's like i would have just devoured those bags <laughs> way back when okay right this is the fun stuff well well maybe not necessarily the fun stuff but this is like the the powerful stuff i guess to me so I made a list of the top 10 things that I learned from ages 20 to 25, and this is what they are. If you are 20 to 25, then I hope some of these can be helpful to you, and if you're older than that, I'd love to know if you've like learned similar lessons as these. And to be honest, these lessons don't even have to be exclusive to that time in your life. I think we can all learn things at any point, and there are so many things that you probably learned in that period that I didn't. And these might be some things that you didn't learn during that period, but you're learning now. Like, I think everybody's on their own self-discovery journey but anyway these are the 10 things that i learned that i wanted to share number one these are also not in any order this is literally like a brain dump type situation but number one prioritize finding your comfort zones and safe spaces they'll protect you when you need somewhere to retreat to i cannot tell you how valuable it was for me finding like where i felt safest and i know everybody always says like do things outside your comfort zone do things outside your comfort zone and whilst i think that's excellent advice i also think that 
it's so important as early on in your life as possible to discover what your comfort zones are and learn like which people are your safe spaces and which places in the world are your safe spaces so that when things get overwhelming and you start to feel a little lost, you've got places to go to. So step one, prioritize finding your comfort zones and safe spaces. Number two, short and sweet, gossiping makes you feel bad. It just does. And we could get into the nuances of how positive gossiping makes you feel good. Like when you share good news about somebody else, that can be a lovely thing to do. But overall, gossiping makes you feel bad. In your early 20s, don't get sucked into too much gossip. It'll only make you feel crappy. Number three, experiment and explore. You're young and it's just not that deep. The older you get, the more you'll wish that you said yes to things when you were younger. This is me basically just saying, life is just not that serious at this age. Just say yes to things as often as you can. Explore, experiment, see what's out there in every single avenue and just say yes. Don't ever think things too much. It's not that serious. Number four, this is such a big one that I think was so important for me to learn as early on as possible. And I think there are bits of this that I'm still learning now, I'm still applying to my life now, but the seeds of this I learned at 20 to 25. Comparison is the thief of joy. Ask yourself if you really do want that other person's life or that thing from that other person's life. Because sometimes I say to people who are getting caught up in comparisons, the thief of joy, where they go, oh, my friends have, like moved to a different country and I'm really jealous because they now live in the States and I'm still stuck in England and I wish I could be in the States while they're in the States, whatever it might be. And you have to ask yourself, okay, so they've moved to the States, that's amazing for them. That's super cool. But it also means they've left behind all of their friends and family and there's two sides to every coin. And would you as yourself, I know it looks amazing for their experience because it was right for them, but you as yourself, do you genuinely want to do that? Do you want to be in America? Do you want to say goodbye to your friends and family here? Do you want to uproot your entire life? Sometimes I think social media, especially being so prevalent, we can compare ourselves and end up convincing ourselves that we want things that we don't actually want just because it looks so good on the other person. And that's because that thing was meant for them. But I've also gotten the same one that Ask yourself if you really do want the other person's life or that other person's thing, element of their life. And if you do, feel motivated, not jealous. If actually you think about all the different parts to it and you go, actually, I do genuinely, genuinely wish that I could move to America and I'm genuinely so jealous that they're doing it and I'm not. See that as a spark of excitement of, I found something that actually I've realized I really want and someone else has shown me that it's possible and someone else has shown me that there is a way to do it that looks amazing to me. I'm gonna go and start getting my ducks in order and start working out how I can make that happen for myself and make a plan to make that happen. Anyway, so that's number four. Number five, this is such a big one. Loving yourself is hard hating yourself is even harder. Spend time learning how to talk kindly to yourself and to be kind to yourself. Become your biggest cheerleader. The earlier on that you can do this in your life, the better. Become your biggest, biggest cheerleader. Think of a friend or a family member that always makes you feel good, that always bigs you up, and be that person for yourself. Go, for every nice thing they say to me, I'm gonna, I wanna be even nicer to myself than that. You spend more time with yourself than you spend with anybody else on the planet. A lot of the time it's just you and yourself up here. Surely the person that you spend the most amount of time with in the world, you want them to be a kind, nice, supportive, loving person. So that's who you need to be for yourself. I know sometimes it can be hard, which is why I put there loving yourself is hard. It can be hard. It's hard at the beginning. It was hard in my early twenties when I hadn't practiced that muscle. Now I find it much easier to be kind to myself and show up to myself, not always, but it's a muscle that you have to work. It's something that you have to practice at. And hating yourself is so much harder and so much more miserable than learning to love yourself. So that's number five, and that's a biggie for all of us at every stage in our lives, I think. Number six, friendships take as much work as a romantic relationship. Don't take friends for granted, invest in them or lose them. I definitely, from 2025, got swept up in boys and or men I suppose at that age but men and like romantic relationships especially when you're young and like that infatuation thing can come along and for the first time you're meeting people outside of your small school group that you knew from when you were growing up and all of a sudden there's all these different people from all walks of life and 
especially if you've always been a hopeless romantic like I was. I had all these visions of like meeting the love of my life the first day that I went to university and getting engaged and having loads of babies in my 20s or whatever the romantic notions were that I have. I definitely had to remind myself a few times. Friendships, it should be so obvious, but a friendship is the same as any other kind of relationship. And they always say that you know, relationships are hard work and you have to put in effort to make them succeed and you have to put in effort to make them thrive. And I think it's exactly the same thing as your friends. And I think when I learned to kind of like date my friends, as in the same way that you'd like go out for a date night with a romantic partner, make sure that you're prioritizing like quality time with your friendships and with your girlfriends. And I definitely learned the lesson the hard way, both being on the receiving end of somebody, of, of people not putting in that effort with me. And I'm sure the same way, the other way around, but invest in your friendships or you lose them. Same with any other relationship. So prioritize your friendships is number six. Number seven, relationships aren't meant to exhaust you or upset you. If it's too heavy to hold, let it go. This applies to both friendships and romantic relationships. I think it's such a tumultuous time, your early 20s, trying to work out which people make you feel good and which people you've surrounded yourself with, but actually really, really don't make you feel good. And I definitely had a few of those. I think it's probably really common for all of us to not really realize that somehow we've ended up giving somebody way too much of our time that actually doesn't feel good to be around. They, you don't feel your best when you're with them. This is your reminder. Relationships of any kind are not meant to exhaust you or upset you. If it's too heavy to hold, just drop it. Let it go. Number eight. Oh, this is such a big one for me. Setting boundaries and sticking to them feels like freedom. No more getting persuaded into things that you don't like and that don't serve you. Boundaries was something that, to be honest, I could even maybe say I learned this in my teenage years, but learning to like hold on to them and stick to them is something that took me all the way through my early 20s. But there's just certain things that I've always been quite clear on. Like I do, I did love partying in my early 20s, but I've never liked drinking that much. And those were always like really hard lines that I set for myself. And then there's peer pressure and all those kinds of things at university. And for me, once I got better, at making my boundaries like really clear with people not just from like a partying sense but with my time and my energy honestly it's so it's it's freedom i think in your early 20s you don't necessarily know like what your boundaries are so then you can kind of get swept in different directions that don't feel good but you're not sure why they don't feel good once you get to the point where you're able to identify what those boundaries are and that anything that crosses those boundaries all of a sudden makes you feel anxious or any kind of negative way. It's it's freedom, it's freedom to yourself to go, ah, oh, finally, I know what makes me feel good, I know what doesn't make me feel good, I know where my lines are, I'm just not gonna let anyone cross them because I know it's not worth it. Number nine, at some point you're going to make a mistake, it's okay. Stop shame spiraling, like just, just stop. You hooked up with somebody you wish you hadn't, you said something hurtful to a friend, you put yourself in a situation that you wish you hadn't put yourself in and you shouldn't have put yourself in, it's okay. Take the lesson, do better next time. It's that simple. Sitting in shame is not productive. We are trying to figure ourselves out in our early 20s and I just have so many memories of times that I would do things that I didn't like or I'd even put myself in like slightly unsafe situations or maybe I'd gossip about somebody that I shouldn't have gossiped with. Whatever it might be, we all make mistakes and I just remember sometimes being so hard on myself when I made mistakes and that shame spiral you can get into where the guilt kind of eats you alive or the embarrassment of something you've done eats you alive, whether you got too drunk and embarrassed, whatever it is, making mistakes is so okay. It's okay at every single point in your life, but it's especially okay in your early 20s when you're literally figuring out what your values are, what your principles are, what your boundaries are, you're working it all out. It's okay you made a mistake, do better next time, learn the lesson, reflect, and then stop enough remember we have to be our biggest cheerleader going back to number going back to number five give yourself a nice pep talk and move on okay and then finally we're at number 10 and this is such a nice one i'm actually so pleased this is the final one this is such a nice one to end on number 10 is a very simple one and it is just be the joy laugh a lot and try and be the girl that tells the other girl in the bathroom that you like her dress or you like her skirt or you like her lipstick color be the joy and be the confidence boost that we all need. Everybody needs a confidence boost, but because I'm biased and because it was my own experience, 
especially girls in their early 20s. We need a confidence boost. Be that confidence boost for your friends. One, because it's such a lovely gift to give to the world to make other girls feel good at a time in their lives when insecurities are ripe. But two, it will make you feel so good to be the spreader of that joy and to be the catalyst for positive conversations. And that's how also how you make friends. Be lovely to people, be really, really nice, really kind and genuinely sprinkle some happiness into the world. And that is how you'll make friends and build really strong relationships and make new connections. And it will make your life so much more positive and happy as well. So yeah, number 10, be the joy. And that is it. Like those are the key 10 things I learned from 2025. I've got a whole other 10 for 25 to 30, but I'm gonna put that in a different video. And I'm very excited for the pictures that I'm gonna get from 25 to 30. I'm definitely excited for the more nutritious foods that I'm gonna get from 25 to 30. 25 to 30 there was some, a lot more like hard hitting reality stuff. Like career becomes much more significant. Heartbreak was terrible from 25 to 30. Oh, wow. And then you start dealing with like the proper grown up stuff, bills and rent and your friends all starting to move away. And anyway, that's a whole other video, 25 to 30, but this has been so nice reflecting on 20 to 25. It blows my mind how in some ways I still feel like I'm 23 and in other ways, like 23 year old Ellen feels like such a baby to me and that's so young and like it was a different lifetime, but also it feels like I'm literally exactly the same. Um, it's not that long ago and I'm um, and her and I are still totally one and the same thing but I think overall I feel proud of her I know this has been such a different video so I hope it's okay but I just wanted to immortalize that time in my life on YouTube a little bit and I wanted to share it with you so that you know me a little bit better from that time in my life and yeah I'm excited to do 25 to 30 I don't know if 25 to 30 is gonna be next week might or the week after either or and then we can start looking forward to the next decade and I'll definitely have some goal setting videos and some new vision boards probably to head into a new decade but I hope you're all having such a lovely day. If you are watching this on a Sunday then happy Sunday. I hope you're having a lovely weekend. As always thank you so so much for watching and I truly cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>